Hello again. This video deals with the answer to question 5 of the quiz I set a while ago. If you have not taken the quiz and would like to do so, the link is posted below in the comments section, as are the links to the answers to the first four questions. First let's remind ourselves of what the fifth question was. True or false? The recent rise in global temperatures coincides with an increase in solar activity. This is getting into the question of whether the sun is causing global warming, the warming of the earth that has been going on for the last few decades. The sun does affect climate. After all, it is a source of over 99% of the energy that sustains this planet. So if the sun varies, then we will feel its effects. And the sun is a variable star, even if it is a somewhat benign one. 400 years ago, the sun went dormant for about 70 years, and that coincided with a string of very cold winters in Western Europe and the Eastern US. If that climate shift was indeed caused by the sun, then it establishes the direction of the relation. A less active sun should lead to a cooler climate and vice versa. So how do we measure solar activity? The traditional way is by counting sunspots. Sunspots are manifestations of solar magnetic field and cycle between minimal activity and high levels of activity over a period of approximately 11 years. If you count the number of sunspots and the number of sunspot groups, you can calculate an activity index called the sunspot number. If you plot that data over several decades, the cycle becomes plain. Note that over the last 50 years, solar activity seems to have been declining if you just go by the peaks. But a long low cycle may have just as much or even more solar activity than a sharply peaked short cycle. But cycles do not affect the long term climate. There would have to be some sort of trend. So how do we tell if there is a trend in the data? Well, one way is to smooth the sunspot data over the period of the sunspot cycle, which will remove its effects. When you do that, you see a clear downward trend. I fitted the trend line from the 1956 minimum to the most recent one, and there was a significant downward trend. Ah, but you might say that global warming did not take off until the 70s, so I repeated the analysis from then to the present day and got an even steeper trend line to fit the data. Uh, so at least from a sunspot point of view, the sun has been getting less active, not more so. This is a contradiction to the solar theory of global warming. This is also the case for other indicators of solar activity too. X-rays, F10.7, ultraviolet, flare rates and CME rates. Most important for us is the total energy output by the sun. The so-called total solar irradiance. Unfortunately, we have only been measuring that for 30 years. Here is a full-scale plot of the total solar irradiance, which is not often shown. Note how flat it is. On the grand scale of things, the sun hardly changes. No wonder when I was at college it was referred to as the solar constant. However, if you blow the graph up by a factor of 100, you can see the variability which follows the solar cycle. The changes due to the cycle amount to about a tenth of 1% of the overall signal. The large dips are caused by sunspots. Let's try the same trick again and smooth over the solar cycle to get rid of the short-term changes and see if there is a trend. When we do that, we do indeed see a downward trend. However, some interpretations of these data show a barely significant upward trend. It amounts to less than 10% of the solar cycle modulation, i.e. 1 hundredth of 1% of the total signal. What if that interpretation is correct? Is it enough to cause the warming we are seeing here on Earth? Here is our big picture of TSI again, but I have marked two bars on the plot. The one in the bottom left represents the annual change in the amount of energy we receive from the Sun due to the Earth's orbit being elliptical. The one in the bottom right is the change in the amount of energy we get from the Sun per square metre in Washington DC due to the different altitude of the Sun from summer to winter. Both dwarf the either the positive or negative trends in total solar irradiance. If such a trend caused a 0.7 degrees centigrade change in temperatures, we should be seeing 70 degree shifts in temperature annually. We don't. Thus the answer to question 5 is false. So the next time you hear someone saying that the sun has become more active, and that explains global warming, either they have been duped or they are lying to you. Keep safe. Bye for now.